Hey, Sarah, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Uh, tell us how you ended up coming to Hardin Simmons and working in admissions. So I actually heard about the job in admissions through uh, Gray Hoff, and he, I was looking for a job. I had been working for my church for a little bit, working a couple part-time jobs, and he recommended, since I love people so much, I should come recruit for Hardin Simmons. And so um, I applied, and I got the job in graduate admissions, and I've been here a little over a year now. So you said loving people. What's so great about people? Tell me. Everything. I love people. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I've always been extroverted, always been outgoing. Yeah. My people, or my parents have been. Been, um, in ministry for years and years and years so I just grew up my parents were youth pastors so I always grew up around people older than me and so mm. I just loved living life around people seeing the Lord through different stories different testimonies um, ways to love people kingdom oriented um, through different capacities so I've just always I love people I love the joy of loving people that's good um, you're a little bit shy on the stage though from what I understand so tell me about your the, the your shy. your stage fright. Tell us all about that. <laughs> I, uh, I am a worship leader at my church here in Abilene, and I've been leading worship since I was about 12 years old. Like I said, my parents have been in ministry for a really long time, so I grew up with my parents being the worship pastors at my church. So at 12 years old, my dad and I were playing the piano, and he was like, can you actually sing? <laughs> I think you can sing really, really wow. well. And so at 12 years old, I started leading big church worship, is what we called it. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, fell in love with it at an early age that when I would get on stage I just felt like I would close my eyes and it was just me and the Lord and in the mm -hmm. room I didn't feel like anybody else was there and so that's always been my favorite thing to get to lead others in let's take that from a different angle let's say you you're going through a tough time mm -hmm. life is not good yeah. life doesn't seem to be working out well yeah. do you use that same music singing to get through that do you ever go home, pound on the piano, and <laughs> scream at the top of your voice? Yes, all the time. <laughs> um, so when I was 12, actually, is when I taught myself how to play piano. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad plays piano, and he used to play for hours, but eventually he would say, I need to go work or, you know, no. <laughs> hang out with your mom, so I can't yeah. play for you all in all hours of the day. So I taught myself how to play piano at 12 years old, and that's really where I fell in love with worship because that's really where... I fell in love with Jesus was mm. at the piano and where I still feel like my quiet place with the Lord is where I'd rather be. Mm. Leading worship on stage is awesome and super grateful that the Lord's given me the platform to do so and the gifting, um, but I would much rather, if I could choose, I would sit at the piano with Him all day long over any stage. Mm. So. so if I was to say, what is one thing that you'd like to do every day of your life if you got a chance to do it and it can't be music or singing or playing the piano, what would that one thing be? That's a really hard question. <laughs> there you go. I'm asking grilling questions today. That's a really hard question. Um, I think one of my other favorite things to do is to journal. Mm. I love words. I wear big words of affirmation, girl. Mm. And so I love to talk things out, process, out loud process, um, write it down, talk to the Lord, talk to people. So I'd probably just write letters all day long to people. Mm. Ever had a situation when your mic died on you, the music was off, or mm -hmm. difficulty came your way. Oh, how, did, yeah. how do you deal with that? Well, luckily my husband's an audio engineer, so um, the one time my mic did die on me, he was in the back running sound, and I flagged him down in the bag and was like, my mic's dead, like don't start service, don't let the lights go down. So. People were really confused because, you know, the count gets to zero. Yeah. So it had gotten to zero and I'm backstage like frantically changing <laughs> the batteries on my microphone. Um, there's been a Sunday there where the power went out and we were on stage and we were like, all right, here we go. We've got an acoustic guitar. Like, we're just going to roll with the punches. And let's we did with that. half the set just acoustically, just sang with all the voices. That's good. Well, thanks for coming in. Appreciate you sharing with us. Of course. Thank you.